Focus 6 is about chemical equilibrium. And this, this really is the, the culmination of um, the chemical thermodynamics sequence, because now at last you can begin to apply thermodynamics to problems of real chemical interest, or at least they should be of interest. And in particular, the, this focus establishes the link between thermodynamics and that most chemical of parameters, the equilibrium constant. But you can see how it arises. I mean, you've got in your mind the sense of chemical potentials pushing against everything. If you've got a, a series of, um, of um, materials, of, of substances, that are all in the same container, all with their individual chemical potentials, all pushing around, and, but able to transform themselves from one substance into another, then the whole thing will settle down into a state of chemical equilibrium where the chemical potentials are all in balance, where the Gibbs energy of the, of the system has reached a minimum. And so th this focus begins by establishing the link between the equilibrium constant and the Gibbs energy of the system, specifically a relation between the um, the standard reaction gives energy and the equilibrium constant for whatever reaction it is that you're talking about. And it's very interesting, I think, to realise that chemical reactions and their spontaneity depend upon the mixing of the reactants and the products. If you somehow had a, had somehow had a, a system where the reactants just changed on the spot into products, then without mixing, then the system would just slide from pure reactants all the way down to pure products because that would be the minimum Gibbs energy. But because they mix, because the reactants and the resulting products mix together, it means that you've got an additional contribution to the Gibbs energy which comes from the entropy of mixing. And that increases as the amount of products increases and then decreases again as the reactants virtually disappear. So you no longer have any need for mixing. And it's that presence of the mixing which determines really the position of chemical equilibrium. So the calculation that you should have in mind when you're establishing the link between K and delta G standard is the fact that you're taking into account all sorts of contributions, one of the most important of which is the mixing of the reactants and the products. Now once you've got the equilibrium constant in terms of the Gibbs energy of the, of the system, specifically the, the standard reaction Gibbs energy, then, because you know how the Gibbs energy varies with the conditions like temperature, you can start to um, infer how the equilibrium constant will depend upon the temperature and whatever other conditions <coughs> you might have in mind. I mean, surprising things happen then, because the um, because delta because the equilibrium constant is related to the standard Gibbs energies of the substances involved. And they are defined as having a certain value under a pressure of one bar. Even if you change the pressure of the system, the equilibrium constant doesn't change because those delta G's, the, the, G, the Gibbs energies, can't change because they're defined as being at one bar. So they're not pressure dependent. So the equilibrium constant of a reaction is not pressure dependent. And so equilibrium constants you infer from thermodynamics are independent of the pressure. So you know, it's quite uh, maybe one of the first surprises from chemical thermodynamics. But of course, because you also know how the Gibbs energy depends upon the temperature, then you can now predict how 
the equilibrium constant depends upon the temperature. And you get all the sorts of laws like Van Toff equations and so on, which give you that explicitly. So you've made that connection. Then um, one of the seriously interesting, in principle, ways of doing a chemical reaction is to allow an electron to migrate from a reactant species to a product species. That is, to think of electron transfer processes, and in particular, redox processes going on in solution. And so you can now start to make measurements of the thermodynamic properties of a system by making electrical measurements. And this gives a very um, important and powerful way of exploring systems because electrochemical measurements made on electrochemical cells and so on uh, um, provide you with ways of measuring equilibrium constants um, and therefore with Gibbs energy, reaction Gibbs energies. And if you measure the temperature dependence, then you can also get uh, reaction entropies and also reaction enthalpies. So the, the, the application of electrochemical techniques is, uh, really opens up a different window on thermodynamic measurements and is an example, really, of using, um, of how thermodynamics enables you to use measurements of one kind to determine the values of properties of another kind. Now you're using measurements of electric potential difference to measure calorimetric properties. And I think realizing that you're doing that adds some interest to you know, chemical thermodynamics and so on. So in this particular focus, we've reached the culmination of chemical thermodynamics in establishing the link between measurable thermodynamic properties and chemically interesting properties like the equilibrium constant. And we've used thermodynamics to explore how both those properties, the types of property, vary with the conditions. And we've seen that we have also opened up a door through chemical thermodynamics to the application of electrochemical techniques to the determination of thermodynamic and, in general, thermal properties.